neither because they are of the seed, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. Right, so you can't even say the seed of Abraham because Abraham fathered other nations, right? He says, you're not all children just because you're the seed of Abraham. Read. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Why? Because it's through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob through the 12 tribes. Read on. That is, they which are the children of the flesh. So now he gets more specific. He says, that is, they which are the children of the flesh, meaning the ones not keeping the commandments, right? Because what makes us holy? What's good and just and holy? The commandments, according to Romans 7, right? So he tells you here, not, uh, that is, they which are the children of the flesh, come on. These are not the children of God. It don't matter that you have the Israelite blood. Although you need that. Doesn't mean non-Israelite blood can keep the commandments and do it. You need to be of the seed and keep the commandments which are meant for us, right? So he says the ones that are of the flesh, they are not the children of God. Come on. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Some are ordained to everlasting life and salvation. Some of our people are ordained to damnation, right? That's what it's going into. Now, let's go back to John and read... Uh, Verse 26 again. Book of St. John, chapter 10, verse 26. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. Right, he's like, I told you guys before. You're not of, you're, you're the children of the flesh, is basically what he's telling them, what we just read in Romans. Read on. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Right, because they're counted for the number of the seed. So it... Just because we're here doesn't mean even we're all right. Remember, you got to, till Christ return or until we die in this walk, right? So, but we must understand, you have to be counted of the seed in order to be able to understand and, and let these commandments fill you up. That's why we don't go by appearance sake, really, right? You, you, we, you say that you descend from this, your spirit bears witness, okay, the commandments is going to filter you out. The laws is going to filter you out. If you're not really Israel, you will not endure in this. Your spirit is not made to. So if you're of another nation, you won't be able to endure until Christ returns or until you die. It's just impossible. Impossible. That means you could have an imposter sitting amongst us 40 years. But he ain't going to die in this truth. There's going to be something along the way at the appointed time that the Most High has for that person to fall away. All right, read on. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. So now, as we, because as we read down, he's going to mention to them about being gods. And he says, and I give unto those that, base, that hear my voice, right, that keep the commandments, like we read in Romans 9, that come from Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, meaning the 12, right, and are not the children of the flesh, but counted for the seed, he goes, those get eternal life. You have to understand, I, I don't know if it's maybe we're desensitized in this generation because of sci-fi and fantasy movies and things like that. Eternal life, or it's just that our minds can't wrap around eternity. Right? And that, it's probably a little both. It's probably a little both. Immortality is a God-like characteristic. It is a God-like attribute. It is not a light thing to say you will be immortal. It's a godlike attribute. And, and we don't meditate on that enough. I think we talk about eternal life and uh, we have this thing from Christianity of your spirit being up in the clouds. And uh, I mean, how do you fathom eternity when our life is as a, a vapor, right? As a wisp of wind. Go ahead. They don't see it because only Esau had to get that privilege. Right. Right. And yeah. In Hollywood, only Esau gets that privilege, Cap is saying. Right. So you see that there and you're like, damn, you know, they get that treatment. We don't. Right. And if we do, we're like some vicious vampire or a werewolf or something. Right. 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 Yeah. Blackula. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't be Dracula. You had to be Blackula. Right. Got to show you how they, that's the black exploitation era. Right. Blackula. Hey, at least you had Blackula. We didn't have no damn. Uh, 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 what would you call Car a, a vampire named Carlos? I don't know. Juanito Cula. <laughs> Juan Cula. <laughs> Read that verse again. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, 
Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Nothing will separate you from Christ, right? Like Paul goes into as well. There's nothing that can separate you from Christ. So he says, the people that are really counted for the seed, that hear me, that are of that seed, nothing's going to take them out, right? All going into what I said before about until you die, until Christ returns. That is also a godlike characteristic, right? Um, immutable is the word that it's used, right? Sometimes I think there's a scripture that says the immutable God or something, um, meaning you cannot change, right? Malachi 3, uh, is it 3? and six uh, right yeah i changed not that's a characteristic of a god immutable so he's letting you know right as he's lining it up because he hasn't even said that ye are gods yet but he's giving characteristics of it and we forget this this is why i say we have to think about this we have to live and behave like the gods we are even though we've been stripped of our godlike powers and abilities but we have to behave that's why it talks about a god head mentality Right. I remember we used to do a lot of the self-help stuff back in the days when we were network marketing and stuff. And uh, I think it was uh, Robert Kiyosaki, and he had a thing. He was saying it to be rich, but he says uh, he called it be, do, have. Right. And he says a lot of us want to we always want the end. We want eternal life. We want everlasting salvation. Right. Um, but we don't want to do the things that's required to get that. And even before you start to do the things. The B part is the mindset that we have to have. We still see ourselves, as much as you may say on the surface, as base, as not enough, as not worthy. And if you can't find yourself worthy enough, if you can't see yourself in this scripture, you're not going to make the other steps that you need to do. This is why you stumble in the doing, and this is why you jeopardize the potential to have what God has promised, right? So you have to be that thing first. So we got to get it into our minds. Right? Is this how a God would behave? It's kind of like when, uh, let's say you work in a job where you wear a uniform. Your behavior changes when you dress in the role, right? You, you dress like a police officer, now you start to act like a police officer. You dress like a fireman, you start to act like a fireman. And guess what? You do the things that firemen and policemen do, or a postal man, or a doctor, or a nurse, or whatever it is. So why is it different with us? We start to dress like an Israelite should dress, right? We start to em embrace and believe that we're Israelites, but we fall short in the godlike portion of it. Go ahead. Esau, but Esau understands that it's a, it's a mindset that you need to instill. Y'all remember the commercial with the army? Be all that you can be. It didn't say do all you can. Right. Okay? It said be all that you can be. And now you're a broke kid in the ghetto, all right, or, 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 or in the country. And you see that, that's designed to inspire you. Man, I could be... Jumping on, and they show it, right? Like, that, that never happens, by the way, when you get into boot camp. Trust me, it, it don't. All right, you're jumping they, out of, out of they, buildings. They show you the most sensational. Right? You, you're like this, jump. trust me. They didn't tell you that it, you were scared as shit before it, you did that. It, right? They don't show none of that stuff, bro. All right, it's different. But your mentality is be all that you can be. This is what's going on. Mm -hmm. Well, Cap, it's a mindset. It's, it, they, they, they hit your, your subconscious with that. Yep, absolutely. Come on, read on. My father, which gave them me is greater than all and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand basically he's emphasizing the chain of command right they can't be plucked from my hand and they can't be plucked from the father's hand because i'm letting you know i come in the father's name come on i and my father are one meaning see christianity took that and their mind can't well let me put it like this the ones who started to push that doctrine understood what this said but they said eh, everybody else is uh you know, what do you say? Nobody ever went broke, underestimating the American people, <laughs> right? They said, ah, these people are lemmings. Let's just say that means God is, Christ is God, and God is Christ, right? Because why? That keeps you away from properly attaining your godhood if you, go, if you buy into any of that nonsense. You, gotta, you, you have to understand that the doctrine is designed to transform us. The doctrine is designed to keep us Till that day when, when we really are changed and our statures return and our true form is returned, right? You know, you got some brothers now, right? They go to the gym, they start flexing their muscles, right? They stand out front, they get a little bicep, right, Officer Isaac? And they think, they think something going on, right? Man, that's nothing. You get content with that stuff. Now, that don't mean let yourself go either, right? We got to respect our temple, right? It's the vessel that the Most High has put our godhood into, right? 
for better or worse. So you got to do right by it. But that's nothing compared to the godlike. Because with, with godlike abilities, with godlike characteristics, you don't think we're going to be like gods? Right? I'm not going to go into it today, but when it talks about no weapon formed against thee will prosper, nothing can come against us, that's a god. That's a god. And you know how that's a god? Because they gave you Superman. And all the offshoots of Superman, right? I was watching Jupiter's Legacy. You have Utopia. He's an offshoot type. Uh, you have the boys, and you have Homelander, and he's a Superman. Off and they're basically gods. And uh, maybe when I do the second part, I don't know. I don't know if I'll talk about it more today. The boys especially, uh, it, it shows you what godlike power in a mind and a spirit that's not ready or capable to have godlike power would be, especially in the boys, because the whole premise is these guys have these guys and women have godlike power in that show, the superheroes, and in the comic book world, they also have the character, the godlike mind, the benevolence behind it, but that's not reality. If most of us would get spiritual power, we'd be we'd be nigs about that thing. We'd be nigs about that thing. Some of you get a breakdown, and you think you're Superman. I understand this breakdown. Oh, my level, I don't read this. That's play play. I read this. I study that. That's, that's play 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 stuff. Oh, I know this. I know that. You think you get some sort of spiritual power, you're going to be right? That's what, that's what makes the show The Boys so great is that it, it gets you into that mind. See, some of y'all, you watch stuff, right, and you just take it for face value. Everything I watch, I'm always thinking scriptures, right? I, I finished watching Jupiter's Legacy. It pulled me in. It's not the most action-packed. It's a lot. But you know what? The storyline, I'm thinking things spiritual, 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 right? Uh, there's another one that I'm watching, Shadow and Bone, spiritual. We all have it's, uh, the light giver, and they, they're worshiping her now. There's all types of stuff. Like, like, they're always putting it in front of your face. And we're the only ones that don't see that type of stuff, all right? So same thing with all these doctrines. They know that our minds are ripe for that stuff. So when it says I and the Father are one, Christianity gets you to believe God and Christ and the Holy Spirit. They're all the same, the Holy Trinity, and, and Christ is the God, right? And that's what they tell you. No, what he's simply saying is we on one accord. Because, and it's real easy because when you read verse 27, without even having to go into the breakdown, when you read verse 27, uh, I'm sorry, 28, he tells you first nobody can pluck them from me, and then he goes and he tells you but it's, that's because of the way my father has set it up. Right. And then, of course, he's saying my father. He's telling you there's another entity, not just himself. Right. You going to say something. So you spoke about movies, right? Mm -hmm. How you look at it spiritually. Guess what? Those movies are made spiritually by the people that want us to believe that we're nothing. For right. example, right. Every superhero is an Edomite. Right. Yes. So spiritually, they know whether they really subconsciously or consciously know. When they create that movie, they do that with the, with, the, with the intent in mind to make themselves seem superior. So they're looking at it spiritually when they make the movie. Plus, they also know that making the movie like that will keep the ignorant Israelites asleep. Y'all don't know nothing that I hey, just said. They didn't you, get that. you remember that song, they The White Man that. Got a God Complex? They see themselves as gods right. and we don't. And they, they make walk their movies accordingly is the point I'm making. And we... Not looking at things spiritually, because you see everything spiritually, right? The same thing with me. If you're in the spirit, you should see everything in life, because everything is spiritual in the world. Everything. Our bodies are just a box for our spirits. Our spirits is what moves us. Y'all don't even get that. Y'all don't. Because if y'all did, y'all some of y'all wouldn't be acting the way y'all act. You have to look at everything spiritual, because it's a spiritual battle. That's why Paul said that. The, right, the, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but spiritual, because we're fighting all principalities, including Hollywood which is the quick, quickest medium in and, and social media to, 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 to make us seem like we're inferior. It's witchcraft. It's, witchcraft. it's mere name. Hollywood. It's, it's, it's uh, the root word is holy. Hollywood, holly, it's witchcraft. Hollywood is witchcraft, right? Now, it's not to say, listen, it's everywhere, right? So you say, damn, so I'm not going to watch it. Hey, you might be missing out because I'm going to show you. I'm going to use a clip from Thor today in the class for Peter Lord's will. I mentioned it last week, but I'm going to show you how it pertains to us, all right? That's what I'm saying. I could, I, I'll see a movie. That's, I haven't seen that first Thor movie in whatever, since it first came out probably. But I remember that scene, and as I was preparing the class, I said, oh, I said, I got to bring this up. I said, I got to create a visual and show the people. So you can use it 
you know, to help you out, right? Because then that means you wouldn't watch the news, then that means, so you have to be able to be in this world and make sure you're not of it, right? Like the scripture says, they are in this world, but not of it. And that takes an effort. And the effort that's needed for that is to realize that you're God. Despite you not having your God-like abilities, you are a God, right? And that's pretty much what the whole first Thor movie was about. Thor, Thor and Odin in the Marvel Universe, they're, they're seen as gods, protector of the nine realms, right, of nine planets that they oversee. Thor, uh, Odin is the, called the All-Father, right? It's all part of the whole thing. And, what, and in the first Thor movie, if you've never seen it or if you remember seeing it, Odin took his powers and he had to wander as a man until he got his spirit right to be worthy of the godlike powers that, that he was given, granted at birth. The whole thing is, a, is a, a similar to for Israel in our journey. We were given godlike power from the garden. Genesis 2, verse 15 on down, tells you the authority Adam had. You read in 2 Ezra, we were made to be immortal. But then we lost that because of our disobedience to God. Same thing in the movie Thor. It's the same thing. And until he learned to live righteously according to what his father wanted him to be, to have the characteristics and whatever, that's what earned him his powers back. That's what earned him his powers. But we'll, we'll, we'll show the clip later. We'll talk about that. Uh, go ahead. Read on. Verse 31. Verse 31. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them. Many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of those works do ye stone me? So they got cut, and they said, oh, we're going we gonna to kill this dude, right? Because the reason they were telling him, proclaim you the Christ, is they wanted to, out of his own mouth, condemn him, right? But he didn't do it. He spoke uh, in, in similitude about it, right? So they said, damn, oh, man, I want to, you know, some of us got that spirit. You get into an argument, you can't do good with the argument. You know, you got somebody that might be, Picking your argument apart, and then you want to hit them, right? Everybody laugh because we know that's how it be, right? So <laughs> they wanted to kill Christ over that. He said, uh, okay, you want to stone me? Uh, for which of my fa uh, father's works do you stone me for? Which of, let me know what my crime is. Because in order to stone me, I have to have broken the law. So he said, tell me what I broke. Come on. The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. So they said, But thou, being a man, maketh thyself God. What does that mean? What does that mean? John 5 and 18. The book of St. John, chapter 5, verse 18. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father making himself equal with God. He said, God is my father. God is my father. Teaching you what? That if you say God is our father and he is our father, you are professing to be a God. Because God's birth gods. You get that in Greek mythology, right? Even if he was half human, they call him a God or a demigod. He's a God. Right? Hercules is a god, a demigod, because he's the son of Zeus. Uh, Clash of the Titans, right? Perseus, they said he's a god. Your father is Zeus. This is why he was able to do the feats that he did, right? Until they messed it up with the remake. He didn't want nothing to do with his pops, right? Right, they should have never remade it. We thought that with better, better stuff, it would have been all right. I'll get you in a second, uh, Hezekiah. So if you profess God as your father, which he is our father, you're claiming godhood. And don't we do that in the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's lost on us. We pray and say, Heavenly Father, oh God, our Father. You're claiming godhood when you do that. So if you claim godhood, you got to behave like gods. Not like nigs. Not like spicks. You have to wrap your head around that thing. What were you, you going to say? You got a question or a comment, sir? Go ahead. Give him the mic. Uh, Shalom. So was he basically uh, 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 asserting his authority over them, saying he had more authority over them? Well, that was in their heart. Remember, that's really why they wanted to kill him, right? They thought they would lose their authority. And they knew that. They understood that. 
They were doctors of the law. They knew that if this was the Christ, their seat was gone. So their vexation wasn't because some uh, righteousness that they were trying to maintain. But he, he claimed God was his father. And you just read in John 5, 18, there's the proof. If you say God is your father, you make yourself. And we know when they say equal with God, it doesn't mean equal, right? We know God is above all. But it means you make yourself a God as well when you claim that. What were we going to say? This is no different from when we out there teaching in camp. When we out there teaching in camp, we bring in the words of God and we're telling our people, we're telling them first and foremost that we're the children of God, right, as teachers, and that so are they. But some people, because of their own wickedness and because their own rebelliousness, they feel like this. Don't they want to hit us too when we come out with scriptures that cut them? It's the, it ain't no different, man. When we out there teaching, we're professing the same thing that Christ was doing here, that we're gods and we're on, what do we, what, what do we say all the time? We were on that side of the sign one time too. And now we're here. We were on the dark side. Now we got the force with us, so to speak, All right, for you Star Wars people. It's the same exact thing. Understand, when they get angry, they're not angry. They don't even know you. Why are they angry with you? They're angry with the spirit that's coming out from this Bible. That's why the Most High God said use his words. It's the same exact concept. What, what you represent, they can't articulate this because their minds are destroyed, right? And not beyond repair. Obviously, the scriptures can heal that head. What you represent to them is that godhood is attainable, that, that, that it's a doable thing. So all their excuses as to why they are they where they are, all their hang-ups up to, I got touched, I got this, I didn't have my daddy, I didn't have my mommy, all that goes away when you embrace your godhood. This is why. Stop with the hang-ups. Stop with how you were raised, and I'm like this because of that. You've not embraced godhood then. Because... Each and every one of us that starts on repentance and that and the longer you endure in this, you represent spiritually to those who aren't everything they're not, even though they can be. If it's our people, they have the potential to be that. And it doesn't sit well with them. It frustrates them. It aggravates them spiritually. Like I said, on the surface, they can't articulate it. They don't really know why. They just know they want to punch you. Right? That's it. Or stone you. Let's go back to John 10, 33. The book of St. John, chapter 10, and verse 33. The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. And we understand the reason he's making it. Not that any of the other stuff was wrong that you said, but I gave you all the objections to that. It's because he claimed God as his father. Right? Come on. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said, ye are God. He said, hey, it's written in your own law. Ye are gods. Come on. If he called them gods. Unto, if he called them gods. Unto whom the word of God came. Right. Unto whom the word. Of, so now you know who the them is, right? Because who did the word of God come to? What scripture can you give me? Officer Isaac. Let's call it out. Uh, Joseph. Shalom. Psalms 147. There it 19. is. That's it. Let's get it. Psalms 147 and 19. The book of Psalms, chapter get, 1. Get your God head mentality up, all right? Get your God. <laughs> 147, verse 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Just like we read in John 10, he says, uh, them he called them gods unto whom he gave the word of God. Read on. He hath not dealt so with any nation. He hath not dealt so with any nation. For if he had, they would be gods too. So Thor is a white man that you see as a god, a lie. Superman is a white man that's seen as a god, a lie. And any other character that they put out there. This is why he tells you he hasn't dealt so with any name. It's so much deeper than just the isolation of the one scripture. There's so much levels to it. He says he called them gods unto whom he gave the word of God. So that's why as you read on, read verse 20 from the top again. He hath not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord that he chose us to be gods. 
that he chose us to say that that is our father. That's where the real praise come from. And when you start to dissect all that, what makes that so special is because of the gifts and benefits that come with it. Like I said, I, I, just for this, I'm not going to be able to for the sake of time. I had to stop myself because it's a small window. I said, damn, I wanted to go in more, bring some more examples. I'm going to do a follow on and I'll, and I'll touch on it more if it be the Lord's will the next time uh, that I do the Sabbath class. All right, let's go back to John 10. And let's read verse 35 again. The book of St. John, chapter 10, verse 35. If he called them God. The Israelites, he gave it to Jacob, to Israel, come on. Unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. The scripture cannot be broken. It don't matter what they put in Hollywood. It don't matter what they tell you in the news. The bionic man, the million dollar man, whatever it is. None of that applies to them. That's envy. That's God envy on their part. That's why it says the white man has a God complex, right? That's why that's out there, because it's a complex for them. When you embrace it, you're just embracing your birthright. We're going to read later. Doesn't the scripture say we are joint heirs with Christ? So we are gods as well. There's levels to godhood, right? Zeus was the god of all, right? The all father. Uh, Odin is the god of gods, right? We have the god. That's the one true God. You have his son who all will bow to. There's a hierarchy and there's an order to it. But there's gods. And we are part of those gods, right? We are part of that godhood. So uh, read on. Say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world. So he sanctified us and then he sent gods into the world. Come on. Thou blasphemist. Because I said, I am the son of God. Now, he's very specifically speaking of himself, but going back to what I mentioned about joint heirs, now, after he has been crucified already, this applies to all of us. Because remember, his blood being spilled is what opened the doorway back to Godhood for us. Right? Come on. If I do not the works of my father, believe me not. Ah, and then he said, if I don't do the works of my father, who is the God, if I don't do God-like behavior, he goes, then don't believe me. I'm full of crap. So what's good for Christ then has to be good for us as well. And if we are gods and the scripture cannot be broken, because when I say if, the if is not uh, us wondering, we know we are. So we are gods, but we must behave like those gods. And this is why some people won't believe us. It's hard for them to see the behavior change. It's hard for them to see, you know, they can accept one, two, a few repenting and changing their lives. Why? Because they've seen that all their life, right? People who, who they think have made it by getting into East, Esau's upper echelons. But when they see them, this is why it gets mad when they see a thousand men marching in order and unity in the street. This is why they get mad when they see thousands at one of our Passovers and it vexes their spirit. Because what they're seeing is the gods upon the earth and it burns up the excuses as they have for why they shouldn't be doing it as well. And, the, and there's no secret. There's no secret sauce. It's keeping God's laws, statutes, and commandments and embracing it with the mindset that we are those gods that the Bible says we are. Read on. But if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works. So he says, hey, if you don't believe me, believe the works. But your works must show godlike or godly behavior. He goes, if, if you can't believe my words, believe our example. This is why Bishop says you can't just give people the scriptures. You got to show them what we're doing. The officer made a good point today. There was a brother listening today at camp, the visiting office, Officer Johanan, right? There was a brother today visiting at camp, and he says uh, the brother was just going to leave, and nobody gave him an invite to come to the school. You've just left them with words. But if you invite them, this is why we have a school. This is why we have security protocol and all that. So you don't got to worry about inviting someone off the street to the school, right? Let them see the works. Let them see that it's not three or four brothers just on a corner doing something. Let them see what we're doing, how we're moving. Open up those doorways to them. Come on. That ye may know and believe 
that the Father is in me and I in him. And show them the work so that they may know and believe that the Father is in us just like he was in Christ. That the Father and the Spirit of Christ is in us as well. So, in verse 34, he says, it's written in the law that ye are gods. Because you have some people, oh, that's blasphemy what y'all saying now. Y'all saying y'all gods? Let's go to the scripture, Psalms 82 and 6. The book of Psalms, chapter 82 and verse 6. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Again, reinforcing what we read in John 5, 18. If you, if you are children of God, if you profess that God is your father, ye are children of God. Ye are children of God. So he says, I have said, ye are gods. So I had to ask myself, I said, it says, I have said. He didn't say, I say. So that means there has to be somewhere else where he's told us that we were gods. Anybody know? Uh, Joseph? And it's not what I just read in John 10. It's uh, in the book of Genesis where he's like, well, make them in our image. Nope. Oh. That's good, though, but it doesn't say gods, right? That's, that's good as a follow-on. I want a scripture that mentions that we're gods, other than this one. Uh, Jehoiakim. I believe it's Genesis 5 where he says the, the sons of God and the sons of the wicked. That's another one. That's not the one I want for now. No, it's in the Old Testament. It is in the Old Testament, the one I want. Nope, it's not in Genesis. All right, let's get Exodus 22 and 28. It's so subtle that I never caught it before. Exodus 22 and 28. So to give context, he's talking about laws about property and laws about personal action in, in Exodus 22. All right? So you'll see the context. So he's talking about how Israelites should deal with other Israelites. So understand who the reference is here. Now read 22 and 28. The book of Exodus, chapter 22 and verse 28. Thou shalt not revile the gods. He's calling the children of Israel gods. He threw that in there real subtle. He threw that in there real subtle. Come on. Nor curse the ruler of thy people. And meaning the judges that would be over us. So he's calling the Israelites gods here in Exodus. And none of them got it. Because remember what happened, right? They all went crazy in the wilderness after coming out of Egypt. They were not behaving God-like. There's another reason it drove God mad. It drove Moses mad with their behavior. So let me get the definition of revile. Because like I said, he was talking about how we should treat each other. In embracing your godhood and being like gods, we need to treat each other like gods. Not like nigs. Not like somebody in fear. That's the true meaning of what it is to see Christ in each other. To see another fellow god in another brother or sister. So it says, uh, criticize in an abusive or angrily insulting manner is to revile. Here he's going over law about personal actions and laws about property. So he's telling you, look, the subject to verbal abuse, to use abusive language to rail on brothers and sisters. Right? What's that one say? To assail with contemptuous or opprobrious language, address or speak of abusively, to speak abusively. So he's telling you that we should not do that to each other. So now that royal law gets a new meaning. It gets a more profound meaning. Why, why is it called royal? Because we're the best royalty there is. There's godhood. It's not, it's not somebody claiming a land that they took by wars. It's our birthright. This is what it means to be an heir. What were you going to say? Also, I know you got the same thing. We've got the same Bible. There's a letter next to God's. Mm. S, it says judges. Yes. Are we not the judges of the world? So it's in letting you know that the gods is also referring to judges. Yes. Which is us. More proof that that's talking about us, that we are gods. We just need to act like it. Right? We just need to act like it. We need to behave like it. We need to behave like it. I know it's, uh, it's not really, it, it is a, it's a little semantics. I was actually going to call the class live and act like gods. But then act has a connotation of you're behaving like something that you're not. So that's why I said live and behave like gods. Live and behave like gods. So we must have the behavior of that. Let's go back to Psalms 82. The book of Psalms, chapter 82 and verse 6. So now, after when, when we read this, we know where he said this before, right? Come on. 
I have said, ye are gods. He said in Exodus, through Moses, that ye are gods. Come on. And all of you are children of the Most High. Now, let me get the definition of God. Yeah, that's the one I want. I don't need the other one. So in Christianity, the creator and ruler of the universe and source of all moral authority, the supreme being. Even in their definitions, they know that, right? Look, all moral authority. So that means all their laws, everything by extension is based on that. In other religions, a superhuman being or spirit worshipped as having power over nature or human fortunes. Now, let me get the similar words. Because uh, is it in... Is it in Jude or James, or maybe I'm off altogether, where he says, uh, if you judge the angels, how can you not judge the... It's Corinthians. Okay, I'm totally off. Let, uh, let's get that real quick. Because he says, uh, a superhuman being, and when the kingdom of heaven has come to earth, as it is in heaven, we will be superhuman beings again, right? We are going to have power over human fortunes, over the rest of of the other nations let's read that in corinthians the book of first corinthians chapter 6 and verse 1 dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust and not before the the saints do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world right it, go ahead and if the world shall be judged by you are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters Where's the, it says angels, come on, read on. Know ye not that we shall judge angels? Right? So the angels here is not talking about, that's why I get it confused, because it's, it's, Jude, it's Jude where it talks about the angel standing in the sun. Which is the one that talks about that? Where it says the power of the angels or something. Anyway, regardless, he says we, the saints will judge the world, like what was just brought out with the letter in the Bible, the judge means God. And then it says or uh, having... Uh, power over human fortunes the angels he is talking about the rulers of this world meaning the other nations because we're not the rulers of this world so he's letting you know hey you guys are going to be gods you're going to have your full godlike authority in that kingdom because you're going to be responsible for human fortunes remember the scripture says if they won't bring their forces if they don't pay their taxes if they don't pay their respect that they need to pay and do what's required of them if they don't keep god's laws Deaf to them, off with their head. They don't do it off with their head. That's what it says. So again, there's so much in there when you think about God. So now it says deity, goddess, supreme being, divinity, immortal. Remember how I said earlier, immortality, eternal life? That's a God-like characteristic, a God-like behavior. And then you hear the word Godhead, and we talk about Godhead mentality. It says Godhead. That's what it means for us to be gods, for us to be gods. Uh, let's go back to the scriptures, Psalms 82 and 6 again. So we are the children of God. So what's that make us? Gods. Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 82 and verse 6. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Come on. But ye shall die like men. But we shall die like men for not behaving as we should, for not uh, keeping what was taught our father's commandments we have been stripped of that godhood for not doing what god told us to do for not behaving like our father taught us to behave we were stripped of that godhood we were stripped of that godhood let me get that clip from thor listen good Why did you bring us back? You realize what you've done, what you've started? I was protecting my home. You cannot need to protect your friends. How can you hope to protect the kingdom? Get into the healing room. Stop. No. He said, there you can't won't. even protect your friends, but you wanted to protect the kingdom. He's just like, remember how it says that how can you rule the church of God if you can't? So you got to start with yourself. You got to start small before you get big. He says, how are you going to protect the kingdom? You can't even protect your friends. So he's starting to show him how his behavior is not godlike. His son, right? Who's supposed to be the God of thunder. But I'm, the, to me, this is Israel, right? This is the most high, and us. Come on. Why did you bring us back? You realize what you've done, what you've started? I was protecting my home. You cannot need to protect your friends. How can you hope to protect the kingdom? Get into the healing room. No! 
There won't be a kingdom to protect if you're afraid to act. The Jotuns must learn to fear me, just as they once feared you. Stop. That's See, some mothers, they want to get into authority. They want to have rulership because they want to be lords over people. So he's not talking about any type of benevolence. He says they must learn to fear me just like they fear you. So you're starting to see his spirit's not right. Come on. Remember, that's like when uh, the disciples asked Christ to rain down fire. He said, you, you don't know what manner of spirit you're in to say to kill them. Uh, the Son of Man has not come to destroy, right? Not, not now. When he comes again, it's to destroy, right? At that time, he didn't come to destroy. He came to try to teach them to build us up the right way. Come on. Vanity talking, not leadership. You've forgotten everything said, I taught that, you. Stop. He said but that's vanity talking, not leadership. That's vanity, not leadership. So a lot of y'all come with this chip on your shoulder of I'm disrespected or whatever. And if it's not outright disrespect, be quiet. That's vanity, not leadership. Because leadership forces you to reflect inward, not outward on other people's actions. Because you're supposed to be better. You're supposed to be more. You're supposed to understand more. Learn the truth, then judge. Come on. The warriors, patience. While you wait and be patient, the nine realms laugh at us. Stop. He the said patience is another one. He said a warrior should have patience. He, and I like that he said a warrior because a lot of you think, everybody wants to be a warrior. Arr, I'm going to pick a name. Arr, I'm a mighty warrior. Some of y'all lack all the attributes that a real warrior has. Only thing you got is anger that you can put out as force. Right. <laughs> Some of you didn't even pick those names. <laughs> Go back like three seconds. Go ahead. I'm going to stop you a few times, so. Patient. The nine realms laugh at us. If the old ways are done. You'd stop. stand giving speech. That's the other thing he says. He says the realms laugh at us. Uh, First Corinthians 1, right? The foolishness of preaching, right? Says the rest of the world laughs at us, but not understanding the salvation behind it. Remember, he's the one that's off, not in the right spirit now, right? Uh, remember, the weapons of a warfare are not physical, right? They're spiritual. It's a tearing down strongholds. Come on. That's why that's God for. You are a vain, greedy, cruel boy. And you are an old man and a fool. Stop. So he said he's vain, greedy, and cruel. Those are not God-like behaviors. So he's telling him his shortcomings as he leads up to taking his powers from him. And then what else he just did that's not godlike? What makes us godlike is these commandments. He cursed his father just now. Right? And the scripture tells you, honor your father and mother, right? It tells you there's plenty in there that talk about don't curse them, none of that stuff, right? Go back a few seconds. I'll be quiet till you get to this part. See, hold on. I what I'm telling you, I watch stuff and I'm... Yes, I'm enjoying the movie, the spectacle and everything that it is, right? But these thoughts are in my head, and, I'm, I'm, and, it's, not, and it's not a conscious thing. Because some of y'all, you, you're, trying, you're trying to get that thing in you, and you watch stuff, and you'll be like, you're looking for some deepness so that you could talk deep. Hey, yeah. Hey, was this this going on? It's, it's not like that. It just comes to you if you're, if, you're, if you're in this long enough, and you're genuinely in this. It just, it'll start to pop into your head. All right. Go ahead. Nine realms laugh at us. If the old ways are done, you'd stand giving speeches while Asgard falls. You are a vain, greedy, cruel boy. And you are an old man and a fool. Yep, stop. That's a good point. He called him a boy. Remember, it says we have to grow up into the fullness and stature of Christ. Paul says, when I was a child, I thought I was a child. But now that I'm a man, I think, of a man. I think like a man. I roll like a man. Right. And there's levels to this. I, listen, I wanted to do this even deeper than what I'm going to be able to. And I was going to talk about remember how I said be do have you got to be a man before you can be a God. So there's man like behaviors that we have to have that we have not have. As a matter of fact, I, I don't know if I wrote it down. I might bring it out in a second uh, after this to, just to cover it real okay. quick. What he said. And you also, you young men, have to be a boy first and don't think you a man too soon. OK, think about that. Right. Hey, and not, he's not just saying young in age. He's talking about you young in this truth because some, some of you are, have repented much older. Some of you are older than, than me. Am I 40? Am I 40? I'm 43 now. I don't even pay attention that much anymore. I'm 43 now. So uh, some of you are older than me. But I, I, I repented younger. So, hey, listen, and talking about that spiritual age, I'm still a boy. 
Because I'm only, well, I'm a teenager now. I'm a teenager now. I just made teenager in the truth. Go ahead. <laughs> yes. I was a fool. To think you were ready. Father. Hey! Woo. Stop, stop. I like that. Yeah, he just... <laughs> <laughs> See, but that's respect though. He said, I ain't even got nothing to say to you. Arr! Arr! Man, so, so you know he pissed as hell. He like, you better, you better not get up in here right now. He didn't even need words. Arr! Tell my kids that if they they get upset when I raise my voice with words, I think they'll they'll freaking cry in a corner if I go. Arr! Go ahead. <laughs> Oh, Odin son, you have betrayed the express command of your king. Through your arrogance and stupidity, you have opened these peaceful realms and innocent lives to the horror and desolation of war. Stop. Notice he called him Odin son, meaning the son of God, because Odin was the all father, the son of the father. So he called him Odin son. Right? Come on. Unworthy of these realms, unworthy of your title! You're unworthy! Of the loved ones you have betrayed. I now take from you your power! In the name of my father! This one before. I owned it all, Father! Cut you off! Whosoever holds this hammer, if he be worthy, he shall possess the power of Thor. Alright, stop. That's it. That's it. Make you want to go watch it now, right? <laughs> um so the stripping away is what happened to us. We were given immortality, right? The, 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 the ways to salvation were, were given to us, and we abused it. So he stripped us away. We're not worthy of the armor of God. We're not worthy of the name and all of that. So he stripped us away and threw us into the earth. He literally sent Thor into earth, right, to walk amongst the men as a man, all right? And then he took his hammer and said, if whoever's worthy will have the power of Thor, meaning the power of a God. That's the Bible. And he threw the Bible out into the earth to endure because you can't destroy the Bible. They've tried and they can't. You can't destroy his, his hammer. Later in an episode, they had some demon destroy it. But you can't, you weren't, it's supposed to be that you couldn't destroy the hammer, right? And that's what gets you your worthy. Worthy is us keeping these commandments, returning as Israelites, and that's what will get you your God like power back. So I'm sitting there, you watching Thor, and you're like, man, I wish I had that hammer to hit a Negro in the head. Right? And I'm there, and I'm thinking all this, and I said, I'm going to do a class. Said, I'm going to bring this out, and I'm going to do a class about that stuff. Right? And I don't say that to exalt myself. I'm telling you, it's part of God-like behavior. And all praises to the Most High, I wasn't always able to see myself that way. Esau understands that, and they understand the power behind that stuff. That's why they show, that's why they're always white. They show that to their kids. That's why we grow up in a world where they feel like they're gods. And, and they sit on us, right? They sit in, on, on the congregation of God as if they are God. And they roll that way, and they roll that way. And you'll see in the movie, he winds up picking up morality and all that stuff. And uh, Very heavy scene, very heavy scene in that movie. Let's go back. Psalms 82, let's read 6 and 7 again. Book of Psalms, chapter 82 and verse 6. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. But ye shall die like men, and fall like one of the princes. And fall like one of the princes. Just like Thor fell, right? Like in the clip that I showed you, we fell, right? For not behaving as we should, for not keeping what was taught. We're supposed to have kept our Father's commandments, and we have been stripped of the godhood. Now, jump up to verse 1. Verse 1. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods. It says he standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth 
among the gods. Now, before I get to that part, hold on. Let me make, let me make sure this isn't it that I have written down. Hold on. Uh, no. Before I get to the uh, precept that I wanted, um, get, don't go to it yet. I'm going to talk about this one for a second. Hang on. But get uh, 1 Kings 2 and 2 ready for me. So he says, God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. What, who, who does he stand in? What congregation? The Israelites. We are mighty. And he says, he judgeth among the gods. Remember how it said the judge means gods also? So he, who does he judge amongst? We read in Psalms 147, 19 uh, and 20. He says the judgments were given unto us. So he judges amongst the gods. We are the gods. It's the God judging his children. It's the God judging gods. Right, like we just saw. Because Thor was walking around like he's the sugar honey iced teas. I'm the ish, right? His father showed him who really was the one that had all that authority and how it was granted to him, Right? Let me get what I said in, uh, what did I say, First Kings 2? Yes, sir. Because uh, we have mentioned it. Like I said, look, maybe I'll go into it more when I do the follow-on. Uh, Cap was saying before you, uh, I had said before you're a god, you got to be a man. Cap said, hey, you got to be a boy too, right? Um, so there's a progression. So First Kings 2 actually uh, start at 1. The book of First Kings, chapter 2 and verse 1. Now the days of David drew nigh that he should die. And he charged Solomon his son. Right? So David uh, is a god, right? And he charged his son, who is a god, because we are all the children of God. And he told him this. I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. He says, show thyself a man. Now, if you stop there, you start to feel in what it means to be a man based on what the world has told you. Uh, betting many women. Uh, beating anybody's ass who gets in your way being stern, ruling like a lion, all this other stuff, right? There's this excessive extreme that's destructive to our households and to our people. But verse 3, he tells you a little more detail of what it means to show thyself a man. Come on. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God. First and foremost, you show yourself a man by keeping the charge of God. Above even me as your father, you have to keep our father's charge. Right? Which is what? The law, statutes, and commandments as your foundation. Come on. To walk in his ways. Again, come on. To keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies as it is written in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest, and whithersoever thou turnest thyself. That's how you show yourself to be a man. That's how you go up into manhood and then start taking those steps into godhood. When this becomes your life, this becomes your, your coda, whatever you want to call it, and that's how you roll. When your mind then becomes this and not pollution from the world of how you should do things, right? Let go in of baggage, all those steps that go with it. Now you start to show yourself as a man. And if you show yourself as a man long enough, with enough time, with enough patience, the godlike behavior starts to come with that as well. The godlike behavior comes with that as well. Right. It says his commandments. Not ours, right? That's a great point. You got to look at that. He says his, his judgments, his commandments, his ways. That goes with uh, Proverbs 3 and 5. Lean not on thine understanding. Trust in him with all thy heart and lean not on thine own understanding. Do that. That's how you show yourself a man because they're so tightly correlated. A man in the Bible is just a stone's throw away from godhood. To be a good leader, brothers, you got to be a good follower first. Never, ever forget that. You do not jump into leadership. You have to have built yourself up to be a leader. You just don't jump into that position. It doesn't work that way. Okay? You don't get hired on a job with no skills of being a manager, and they make you a manager. You work your way up. And a lot of some of y'all in here, y'all work your way up to manager starting packing boxes, and now you're a manager. Okay? Isn't that how it worked with you? You started from the bottom, right? Okay? And you work your way up because you have to build the skill of how to manage personalities, how to manage people. It's the same exact thing with this. You got to build yourself up first. Cap brought that up earlier. All right, you have to go ahead and learn how to rule your spirit first before you can rule anybody else's spirit according to the scriptures. Remember that. Hey, and Bishop had brought that same thing out uh, right around men's conference. I think he might have done it during a class as well. And uh, so what, what that really means is just because you may have taken an exam and you met qualifications 
uh, minimum qualifications that the Bible first and foremost has and then that IUIC has put in place, that doesn't mean that you've arrived. Bishop brought it out and he said, in the position that you're in, that's the position that you're growing into. So you're not, you're already thinking about the next step and you haven't even filled the shoes of the one you've just been placed into. So when you became a soldier, you weren't soldier, you weren't a soldier just because you have the rank. Now you start to fill those shoes as a soldier, right? Uh, same thing as a member. Your, your, and your growth as a member, just because you get the label, doesn't mean you have the behaviors and the mindset and the quality behind it yet. I'm a captain of whatever I am, that means I'm growing into that. I don't even know how many years when my last promotion was, but that means I'm growing into that. And that goes for each rank and each and every one of us. Same thing even with sisters, based on your years in this. Don't, don't be resting. Y'all don't have rank, but you can't be just resting on your years in this. What that should put you in the frame of mind to do is say, uh, like in Luke, when he says, if much is given, uh, much more will be required, right? And much more will be required of you. So the longer you're in this, you've been given much understanding to be able to endure. Guess what? Much more will be required. It's not a time for you to sit down and rest on your laurels and say, I've arrived. I've been here such and such amount of years. That's why we're, we're, we're so adamant and so, uh, I don't even want to say hard, but we're, it's that straight gate. We, we, we're, we're tasked to hold our people in straightly. And that's, and that's what we work through. All right, let's go back to um, the scriptures. Let's get Second Chronicles 19 and 5 now. So he says, he judgeth, right, among the gods. He said in Psalms 82 and 1. Come on. The book of Second Chronicles, chapter 19 and verse 5. And he said, judges in the land throughout all the fenced cities of Judah. Right, judges in the land throughout all the fenced cities of Judah. Come on. City by city. And said to the judges, Take heed what ye do. This is what comes with the responsibility of godhood. This is what comes with the responsibility. Because remember, to be a god means you hold the fortunes of people in your hand. And I want you to understand something. Those of us who give counsel, this is words that we live by. And if we don't, your blood is on our hands. There's a, it's not like counsel is given out lightly. Right? Come on. And he said to the judges. And he said to the judges, take heed what ye do. For ye judge not for man, but for the Lord. We don't judge for man. We judge for the Lord. And in all your judgments, you must think that way. That's why sometimes I'll throw judgment out to the brothers and see what they come up with. Because I want to see if they're thinking carnally or they're thinking God-like in their judgment. Come on. Who is with you in the judgment? Because if the judgment is of God, and this is why I say each and every one of you got to understand this. You might not agree with a judgment. You might not agree with a chastisement or whatever it is. God is in the judgment. God, because he's not talking about God judging. This is when judges were assigned, just like us as leaders are assigned to judge the people. God is in the judgment. You have to understand that. So that's, you see, this is why some of y'all, your marriages don't work. You get judgment, you get counsel, your marriages, because you don't believe God is in the judgment that we've given you. Some of you have different issues. You don't believe it's not working out. Well, what other scriptures can I give you, sis? What other scriptures can I give you, bro? You don't believe that God is in the judgment. You don't see Christ in me. We, you don't see each other like gods. Because I see you like a God, so I'm giving you God-like judgment. But you don't see me as a God, so you think I'm giving you nick judgment. Don't work that way. And as men, we must live by this and understand this. We don't judge for men. We judge for, by the Lord and for the Lord. Come on. Wherefore now, let the fear of the Lord be upon you. And that's why you need to have that righteous fear of the Lord, of the consequence of the judgment. Come on. Take heed and do it, for there is no iniquity with the Lord our God. God has no sin. So if the judgments of God, it's not wrong, whether you agree with it or not. Come on. Nor respect of persons, nor taking of gifts. So uh, we cannot have respect of persons in the judgment. See, and some of y'all, if it was somebody else being judged, you would want it to be impartial judgment. But let's say we might have a little relationship. You might be salty because you're like, damn, you know, like it's not like I'm a stranger to him. Like I know him a little. Why he giving me judgment like that? Because of this. Because of this. Because I want my full godhood back. I'm tired of being short. I'm tired of being overweight. I want to be able to eat whatever the hell I want. I want it to taste great and still look great, too. <laughs> 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 
but I don't look great. I do eat whatever the hell I want, but I don't, I don't look great. <laughs> Let's go back to Psalms 82 and 1. <laughs> the book of Psalms, chapter 82 and verse 1. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. That's us. We got to wholeheartedly embrace that and believe that. Come on. He judgeth among the gods. He judgeth among the gods, the Israelites. Read. How long will ye judge unjustly? How long will we judge unjustly? How long will we not judge according to what 2 Chronicles 19 and 5 through 7 says? Come on. And accept the persons of the wicked. See lot. Right, so he's talking, hey, we need to also make sure that we're judging justly and not accept the persons of the wicked. Don't be respect the persons. Everything like we just read in Chronicles. Come on. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. That sounds like Superman's credo. That sounds like a superhero credo. Right? Those godlike imaginary characters because and they're imaginary because the other nations can't fulfill those roles. Right? It's not imaginary if it was one of us in there, all right, so long as it was done based on the scriptures. But I have a little letter next to defend, right, because, again, we think defend, and we're like, oh, I got to stop bullets for them. I got to get that robber or that purse snatcher or whatever. And uh, mine, it, next to defend, it says, uh, hold on, let me see here, judge, judge. That's the defense. And I'm going to show you in the scriptures why that's the defense. Let's get Leviticus 19 and 17. The book of Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Defend you from sin. And by defending you from sin, we've defended you from the enemy, the ministers of God that are not a terror to good works, by defending you from sin, we've defended you from eternal damnation. That's the defense. Come on. Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Let's not revile each other. Let's see each other as gods. Let's see Christ in each other. Come on. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. Gives another meaning, like I said, a deeper understanding unto that royal law of love thy neighbor as thyself. Let's go back to Psalms 82 and read verse 3 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 82 and verse 3. Defend the poor and fatherless. Judge the poor and fatherless. Don't suffer sin upon them. Apply the royal law. Come on. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. And you know what? It's not just spiritual need. It's having things set up where we can help brothers and sisters and fulfill certain needs. We got the medical team. They go out and check on brothers and sisters, right? We have uh, the food pantry should you need it. Sometimes brothers and sisters might need help with a bill or rent or whatever it is. And I'm telling you, 99.9% .9 of the time, if you have a good reputation and a good report, it's yes, we're going to help you. Come on. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. Why? Be you rid them out of the hand of the wicked by showing them a more excellent way, like the Scripture says. Showing them the way of the Bible. Showing them the way of the Israelites. Showing them the way of God and how to be a God. Come on. They know not. Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Who we see as gods, who see themselves as gods, is not us. And that needs to change. And let me tell you, the change is profound. If it starts just with us, you're going to see it grow. Because, hey, if you think about it, and I'm just going to talk about IUIC. I, if you, obviously, there's other camps that, that are uh, preaching Christ and doing stuff. It started with one man repenting and being that example with his family, being that example with them all around him. And then another man followed that example through Christ in the Bible. And then another and then another. And then and then a few years after that, I, uh, we came on the scene. I was in there. I got to partake in the early beginnings of that to what we've birthed into today. So you want to talk about birth of a nation. So I say. Sometimes for some of you, you can't see it yet because you've come in at a time when so much was here for you already. So you take it for granted because you're used to walking into the Christian church or walking into the mosque or whatever the hell you were into, right? And, and it have already been, 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 been there. 
there's a special appreciation, which is why some of you can here in Phoenix have been able to experience that on a different scale, because how many of you, this is not the first school in Phoenix that you were part of? Raise your hand. So, so if, wait, let me put it this way. If this is your first school, raise your hand in IUIC Phoenix. Raise it high, raise it high. Okay, hand down. If this is your second school in Phoenix, raise your hand. Okay. If this is your third school in Phoenix, raise your hand. If you were in Israel's house in Phoenix, raise your hand. Right. Oh, at one time we went Kano's house for a little while. So to show you how powerful this can be, it just takes one person to endure. And it, it, took, it took Bishop Nathaniel repenting, and other people saw that example, and he taught it and he applied this stuff, and someone else did and someone else did. And, and yes, he, him and, and those that came before deserve all that honor. But all the praise and all the glory is that that was done in the spirit of Christ through the most high. So its power is there if you let it see it. If, if you let yourself see it, if you let yourself embrace it. It's not a waste. They call it the foolishness of preaching, but the foolishness of preaching has made us from one man to thousands, who knows, maybe even ten thousands of strong. And there's so much more work to be done. It's so powerful what he's saying that there were splits among splits among splits, and the word has only grown to the point where we're a threat to the powers that be. Go figure that, right? And we just happen to be one part of it. Bishop With, Nathaniel happened to be one part of it. Without any physicality. Without any, we without didn't, ever raising without a any finger. Without physical war or Just exalting the voice. And using the word of the and most high the word God. of the most high. That's all how, and this is what we got today. Regardless of the other camps, that some of them, you know, whatever, right? If they're not teaching it, the scripture says in pretense, right? What is it? it says something like that? If they're not teaching it in strife. Right. If they're not teaching out of strife. Right. right. Then, you know what? The word is still Christ going is out. Just to show you, okay? Just to show, just to show you how one man, Christ, went ahead and walked the earth and look what we've become. Right. Now, again, it's been tainted by Esau, right? But we had to come to true gods, which is the topic of the class. We had to come. And manifest what we see today. Hey, Christ's work was so strong that, because remember, it's only the upper elite that know that is BS. His work, his walk was so strong, and 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 our credo of how to live as gods is so strong that it birthed Christianity and all its iterations. And you got people out there, right? It's 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 rudiments, like it says in Colossians. It's not the full part, but it, it's so powerful that they took those rudiments and and they use that in their lives, right? Oh, they, and, and guess what? They're going to get the full thing when we in rulership. So <laughs> they want to take those rudiments and try to put that together. They're going to get the full force of that thing when we in power. <laughs> uh, where did we leave off? Uh, verse 5 you finished off at, right? We said all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Come on, read down to 8. Verse 6. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. And if God inherits all nations, we as his children are going to inherit all nations as well. Let's get Isaiah 41 and 8. <laughs> right, we're going we're gonna to do a, a, a bit of reading here. I'm going to try to just let the scriptures talk. But. The book of Isaiah, chapter 41, verse 8. But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. Right, so, when, you know, people say we're God's servants. It says Israel are his servants. Come on. Thou, whom I have taken from the ends of the earth, and called thee from the chief men thereof, and said unto thee, Thou art my servant. I have chosen thee, and, ca and not cast thee away. Right, from the ends of the earth, because we were scattered, right? So he's taken us from the ends of the earth. Come on. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. What we have the one true God as our father. So we shouldn't have that spirit of fear because we know he got our back. So while we may not have invulnerability now, we are invulnerable in a spiritual sense, right? Based on this. We should not have any fear. Read. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. 
they shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. Right, because you're going to have some of the other nations that will see this and be like, all right, man, you, you, you nigs and spicks ain't no damn uh, gods. What the hell are you talking about? They incensed at us when we say that stuff. He says, listen, don't worry. The turn, the, all the foundation of the earth being out of course, the turning of things upside down are going to be made right. Come on. Thou shalt seek them and shalt not find them, even them that contented with thee. They that were against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. For I, the Lord, thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Fear not, thou worm Jacob, and ye men of Israel, I will help thee, saith the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. So he's telling you God got Israel's back, and he's there supporting Christ as well, because that's the Holy One of Israel. Come on. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument, having teeth. Right, so he going to make, he said, we're going to get a superhero godlike weapon, too. He said, I'm going to make you a new instrument, and it's going to have threshing teeth. A new sharp, meaning not new, like it was versus a used one. It's going to be something that's never been seen before that we're going to use to bring things in order. Come on. Thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small and shall make the hills as chaff. That's God-like power to subdue these nations. Come on. Thou shalt fan them and the wind shall carry them away. You know how Superman can blow and send somebody away, right? That's going to be us. Come on. And the whirlwind shall scatter them, and thou shalt rejoice in the Lord, and shall glory in the Holy One of Israel. Because we're going to have to go and put the literal foot in the ass, right? There's going to be an initial destruction, then they're going to try to hide in the clefts of the rock, and we're going to have to go down with our, with our full God-like authority and abilities and play out all them fantasies that we play reading comic books, watching movies, playing video games. And get that thing done. Come on. When the poor and needy seek water, and there is none, and their tongue falleth for thirst, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. Come on. I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the, I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. He's talking about the knowledge that he's putting out in this earth. The dry place, this wilderness that we're in. Remember, right, we have the wilderness of the past, the wilderness of the present, and the wilderness we would go to, right? This wilderness that we're in, he said he's going to provide that thirst and that sustenance for us. He's going to open, he said in this dry place, where, where uh, like in 1 Corinthians 9, where he says the world by knowledge knew not God, meaning by the world's knowledge knew not God, he says by the foolishness of preaching, they're gonna understand that. This. This takes action behind it. Could he do it just with snapping his fingers and make all of us just understand? Absolutely. But he didn't say he was going to do it that way. He's going to do it via us. Be, be an army of gods that need to do this thing for him. Come on. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar, the shitta tree, and the myrtle, and the oil tree. I will set in the desert the fir tree and the pine and the box tree together. Now remember, the trees oftentimes is talking about people. So he's giving characteristics of trees here talking about us. He goes, I'm gonna have uh, certain brothers with different gifts here. I'm gonna have certain brothers with different gifts there, here, so on and so forth. Then he says, so in the next verse, he's gonna say so that they may see it. Come on. That they may see and know and consider and understand together. The line will go out in all the earth so that uh, not only will the other nations know, but the people who are, don't know and are lost, that's that thirst, will be see and know and understand together. Come on. That the hand of the Lord hath done this, and the Holy One of Israel hath created All it. praises to the Heavenly Father, it's done to, by, via him and his son. Come on. Produce your cause, saith the Lord. Bring forth your strong reasons, saith the king of Jacob. So anybody who want to talk against this and what we're bringing out, it says produce your cause. Come on. Let them bring them forth. Let them. Let them speak. I tell you, I can't. Let them come. Tell them, oh, okay, yeah, you got a scripture? Go ahead, read it. Come on. And show us what shall happen. Let them show the former things, what they be, that we may consider them and know the latter end of them. Or declare us things for to come. Because what he's saying here is, 
is, is, is somewhat sarcastic because he's saying, let these other people, let these other nations try to bring forth their strong cause. Can they show you uh, what's going to happen to us? Can they show you things of the past in our history? Can they show you what's going to be and what the end times? Can they declare what's going to come? No, they can't. None of their religions can. Not Islam, not Catholicism, not any form of Christianity, not any form, not no science book. There's no understanding in the earth that can provide all this except God's understanding. Come on. Show the things that are to come hereafter. They can't do that. Come on. That we may know that ye are God. And that gives you God-like ability. That gives you a God-like mind. Because guess what? We can do that. To the measure that each of us has understanding in certain breakdowns, right? Just like there's levels of uh, superhero power, there's levels of God-like power. Each and every one of us is able to do this, but they can't. So let them produce their cause. Let them try to gainsay this. It says that we that they may know that ye are gods. Another way to live and behave like gods is to get your study up and understand this thing. Because more is shown unto us than men understand. Like we read in Luke a couple months back. Kings and rulers and many people have desired to know what we know and see what we see and have not. So bless the our eyes and bless the our ears for that. Come on. Yea, do good or do evil that we may be dismayed and behold it together. Come on. Behold, ye are of nothing and your work of naught. That's what they are of nothing and their works are of naught. Come on. An abomination is he that chooseth you. And if you choose Islam, if you choose some strange diver's doctrine, if you choose uh, the white man's ways, the Arab man's ways, the China man's ways, or whatever it is, you are an abomination. Because only an abomination would choose that over godhood. Only an abomination would choose those lies and that over this understanding. We can see the past, present, and future through this Bible. And all that's promised to us. You're an abomination should you choose that. Let me get Ephesians 2 and 5. We're almost done. The book of Ephesians, chapter 2 and verse 5. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved, and hath, and hath raised us up together. Hold on. I think I gave you the wrong. I hate when I do that. I hate when I do I think it's 3 and 5. That's what I want. 3 and 5. The book of Ephesians, chapter we, 3. We, but, but you know what? I actually stay there because there's something good in verse 6. Come on. Verse 6. And hath raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Right. So just like Christ, when we started in the beginning, said that Christ, uh, he said, God is my father. We brought it in John 5, 18, that if you claim that God is your father, then you are saying that you are God as well. That extends to us as well because it says he have raised us up together, the Israelites, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, Ephesians 3 and start at 5. The book of Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 5, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Right? So, again, it, remember how we were just reading about in other ages there was, um, uh, they didn't, it says produce their cause, the past, the present, the future. It says people didn't understand that stuff, right? But he says, listen, we understand that. This is God-like stuff. This is God-like behavior. Uh, there's another scripture I had, and I miswrote it. Uh, say something while I look that up. <laughs> so going back to a, a couple verses earlier, right? Christianity has had this Bible for the longest. Even in our own black Hispanic churches, falsely so-called, right? But yet, they never told us that we were gods. They said everybody's a god because everybody could get the kingdom. Right or wrong? Right? It took a special spirit to be brought out and to have the understanding, to be taught by men that came before us in this truth, to be taught this Bible. It's the same Bible that every one of your churches had. It's the same doggone Bible. Why didn't they tell you who the true chosen people of God are? Because either A, they didn't know, and that's Isaiah 29 right mm -hmm. there, because mm -hmm. the book is sealed, right? Or they conspired not to let us know. Right. 
Either way, it's a problem, right? That they got to answer for those so-called pastors, That's right? And they will, and they will. Let me get Philippians two and start at five. The book, the book of Philippians, chapter two and verse five. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let that God-like mentality, let that Godhead understanding be in you like it was in Christ Jesus. That's God-like. Part of that, again, dealing with behaviors, let's read verse 4 now. Verse 4. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. That's the benevolence of a God. So in us being God-like, we need to look out for other brothers and sisters. Some brothers and sisters take offense to this scripture. I want to be private. I don't want, listen, and I've gone over this. Let's not get silly, right? But I know there's some silly people, so I always have to uh, make this disclaimer. That don't mean every freaking thing you got to be in their business and try to pull the scripture to be in their business, right? If, you, if, if you're in the right spirit, you understand what we're talking about with this, right? So it says, uh, look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. That's, what, that's the spirit of a God, looking on uh, uh, everything. And making sure, right? Remember, it said a God holds the fortunes of other people in their hands, right? So it says, uh, make sure you're looking on the things of others. Come on. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Because Christ Jesus had that same mindset. And if Christ is equal with God, meaning that he is a God as well, then we should be the same. Come on, we just read that we're going to be uh, joint heirs, joined with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Come on. Who, being in the form of God, Thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Right. So he said, who, being in the form of God, having the spiritual powers, the understanding, and the same mindset, meaning don't feel some way to say that you're a God. It's not robbery. We understand the order. You're not saying you're the God. You're not saying you're above Christ. You're not saying you're above the apostles and Moses. But it says, if Christ didn't think it was robbery to say that, then that's the same mind we should have in the proper spirit. Because in a godlike spirit, you're not going to see yourself above Christ. You're not going to see yourself above God. But you're going to realize that we are their children, that he's our big brother. And if they're gods, then we are gods as well. Come on. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Ah, but with that godlike mindset and that acceptance and acknowledgement it says going back to the way we deal with each other he says he made himself a servant he wasn't a god like we saw in thor for vanity's sake to teach them terror and fear right he was he was set up as a god to be there as a servant and like we read in isaiah 41 and 8 it says we're his servants we're his servants that's how we show that's part of the way we show that we are gods come on and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So the humility that comes with our God-like acceptance and our God-like behavior must be there as well. Because Christ was that example for us of how to walk and act and live and behave like God's. Come on. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Right, so he did that for Christ, and God have highly exalted us as well by only choosing us, by giving us that God-like God -like ability, by only calling us his children. Come on. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in, the, in earth and things under the earth. Come on. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To glorify of God the Father. To the glory of God the Father. So we understand in our Godhood that who's the one that's in charge. It says everything's gonna gonna bow to that. But we also read that we are joint heirs with that. Read on. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So understanding all this. We must continue to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Come on. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. The God is the one that gives us the God-like ability, the God-like behaviors to do God's pleasure. It's all to the glory of the Father. Let's get Romans 8, 13.
the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 13. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. Remember, it said if you're after the flesh, you're not Israel. They are not all Israel that are Israel. If you live after the flesh, ye shall die. You won't be a God. Come on. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. If you mortify the deeds of the body, if you keep the commandments and cast off the sinful behavior, ye shall live. Keep the law, basically. Come on. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. That's what is going to keep you with your godhood. If you're led by the Spirit of God and you are of the blood of an Israelite, like we read in Romans 9, then you are the sons of God. Then you are the sons of God. Then you are a God. Jump to verse 16. Verse 16. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Meaning this Bible shows and foresays that. And remember, whenever you read that we're the children of God and you say, our oh, Father, you are claiming Godhood. You are claiming your birthright. Read. And if children, then heirs. And if we're children, then we're heirs. Come on. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. So it's not robbery to say that we're gods. Come on. If so be that you... If so be that we suffer with him. If so be that we suffer with him. Come on. That we may be also glorified together. We will be glorified together because all those nations is going to see. We're, it's going to be God's. It's Godhood. When they come, they're going to come and bring their forces unto us because they're going to say, that's the city of the gods. That's the city of the gods. And in the midst of that sits the one true God and his Christ, the ruler, that we all bow the knee to. So I pray that you have gleaned some understanding from this. Like I said, there's going to be a follow-on where I get much more granular and specific on key behaviors that are characteristic of what God-like behavior is, if it be the Lord's will, all right? So with that, I say shalom. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision the tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. I, you, I, see, we deliver the truth.